there can be no doubt that the most devastating effect of the fall of man is that humans do not see beyond their noses. This simply means that fallen man does not see beyond the physical. It is also an indication that beyond the five human senses of sight, hearing, smelling, taste, and touch, humans are effectively blind, deaf, and probably dumb. As humans, we see, but we do not know nor understand what is really happening. At most times, we fail to realize that whatever we see physically had their roots and causes in the unseen realm. It is therefore safe to conclude that fallen humans are mere pawns in the political chessboard of the powers that control the unseen realm. The ongoing Israeli-Palestinian conflict cannot be an exception. Certainly, there is more to it than the physical eye can see. Surely, the things that we see today had their roots in the eternal past. Most humans know instinctively that all things belong to God. This is considering that the Almighty created all things. However, not all humans know or realize that shortly after creation, God began to have a problem. This may shock you. Well, the problem that God had was that one of his sons, an archangel named Lucifer, had come to the conclusion that the Almighty God was not good enough or competent enough to rule over his creation, believing that he could do a better job. This ambitious archangel then decided with the full support of a contingent of angels that the Almighty had to be made subordinate to Lucifer, with Lucifer becoming the Almighty. This was effectively a coup d'etat. This was how prophet Isaiah put it in Isaiah chapter 14 verses 12 to 14. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Lucifer, however, could not overthrow God as loyal angelic forces fought and overcame Lucifer's dissident army. The archangel and his supporting cast of angels were thereafter thrown out of heaven and onto the earth. The earth then became the new home of the devil 
and his fallen angels. They also had access to other places in the universe outside the third heaven, which is where God and the loyal angels are based. Essentially, the whole earth, which is 510 million square kilometers, became Satan's stomping ground. However, this did not in any way indicate that the devil, formerly known as Lucifer, now owned the earth. When he learned that someone who was made from the dust of the earth was being installed by God to rule over Satan and over his fallen angels. Certainly, the devil and his colleagues who were marooned on earth were beside themselves with grief because man whom they considered to be inferior to themselves was now to be governor over a place that had become their home. The divine plan was that just as God was ruling in heaven, 
man will be ruling on earth. However, man's rulership of the earth was to be on behalf of God. Not surprisingly, Satan made up his mind straight away that he was not going to accept another humiliation without a serious fight. For someone who had not fully recovered from the ignominy of being ejected from heaven, the devil was prepared to fight to the death in order to stave off another humiliation, this time on earth. Although the devil was determined to bring down the man to whom God had delegated the rulership of the earth, the devil knew he had to be careful so that he didn't get into another trouble with God. He was therefore determined to bring down Adam legally, that is, without a shot being fired. Hence, when he went into the Garden of Eden, he knew what he was going to do. Firstly, he was about to operate undercover as a serpent. Also, he will incite Adam and Eve, and Eve against God so that of their own volition, they will rebel against God. By the time that Satan crawled out of the Garden of Eden, Eden the life and destiny of Adam were in ruins. Satan had taken away the title deed for the earth from Adam. Therefore, instead of the man calling the shots on earth, Satan was now the one calling the shots. The call of Abraham in Genesis chapter 12 was particularly important as it was the beginning of God's plan and design to bring back and restore what humanity had lost as a result of Adam's treason and fall. Consider what God told Abraham when he called him. Genesis chapter 12 verses 1 to 3 states, Now in Haran, the Lord said to Abram, Go for yourself, for your own advantage, away from your country, from your relatives, and your father's house, to the land that I will show you, and I will make, it, make of you a great nation, and I will bless you, with abundant increase of favors and make your name famous and distinguished and you will be a blessing dispensing good to others and i will bless those who bless you that is those who confer prosperity or happiness upon you and curse him who curses or uses insolent language toward you. In you will all the families and kindred of the earth be blessed, and by you they will bless themselves. The nation which God promised to bring about through Abraham is called Israel. This is a nation foreordained by God. Israel, as a nation, was to be God's battle axe on earth. This was a nation chosen by God to discipline, iron, and idolatrous nations. 
you may probably remember that upon leaving Egypt, one of the first God-given assignments of Israel on arrival at the promised land was to annihilate all the idolatrous nations occupying the promised land. This they did not fully do. Not surprisingly, they spared some who continued to be a thorn in their flesh until this day. It may interest you to know that the areas that the Israelis presently occupy is not up to 10% of the land that God gave to them by promise. It was therefore hardly surprising that Satan took a special interest in destroying the nation of Israel and in anything that had to do with the Israelis. The plan of Satan has always been to destroy Israel. All these nations of a particular religious persuasion who are bent on annihilating Israel do not know that they are simply echoing the thoughts, the plans, and the designs of Satan for the nation of Israel. The truth is that the hatred that these people and some others have for Israel is certainly satanically inspired. It is not ordinary by any means. Satan saw and still sees Israel as a threat to his programs and designs on earth. Satan initially planned to annihilate the nation that was to produce the Messiah. Nevertheless, he failed. In the end, he resolved that if he could not prevent the Messiah from being born, the next best thing for him to do was to exterminate the nation that produced the Messiah. It is, this, it's, it is in this regard that one should recall the ordeals of Israel right from the time she became a nation. Satan had pushed the Israelis at every turn since they became a nation about 3,500 years ago. It was the pressure from the satanic realm and their own carelessness that ensured that Israel ceased to be a nation in AD 70. You will recall that Israel did not come back to be a nation again until 1948. This simply meant that for almost 2,000 years, the Israelis were scattered around the world it was actually one of the miracles of history that the nation Israel came back to be a nation again in 1948. Satan has not given up in his determination to destroy Israel. However, I dare to declare on the authority of the Word of God and the Spirit of God that Israel will remain a nation until the end of time. They will also overcome their enemies. Please make sure that you like and share this video. Also, kindly subscribe to the channel and switch on the notification bell. 
I will see you in the next video. Thank you.